Since the dawn of time, man has needed beverages. Man has needed food. Man has needed entertainment. You've come to the right place. You're listening to Pizza Beer Revolution. The podcast will not be televised. It'll be on the internet. <laughs> Downloadable, but it won't be televised. Hit it! What's up, everybody? Pizza Beer Revolution, Mike Plano, Joe Maffei, Joe Gatto, and sitting in on the extravaganza continues, Mr. Adam Richmond. Yes! yes. Yeah. He is here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out, man. Of course. This is amazing. I'm loving it here in Liberace's Mudroom. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, this is where he used to take off his uh, sparkled uh, boots. <laughs> Liberace's Mudroom. Mud that yeah, is yeah. awesome. Man. Rhinestone boots. Rhinestone boots. <laughs> right? We, it was described uh, on an episode ago as a fish tank, like you're sitting, like a human fish tank, right, with no water. It's super opulent. Like, I'm ready for, like, Gordon Gecko to, like, to come in and go, all right, guys, get out of here. I got to go break up a company or something. <laughs> I've been around here. It is crazy, right? This could we be have like... a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, six hands went up in the room. Yeah, that's right, man. <laughs> this could be part of this set from that Rising Sun movie with Wesley Snipes and Sean Connery. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, Japanese yeah. business. Yes. Man. Could be doing all kinds yeah, of all freaky stuff. All sorts of things. Right behind that wall. That nooks and crannies, exactly. <laughs> I really like it when you... <laughs> <laughs> I rob Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. This is one of those rooms you have to, like, you have to put it back into memory. Like, you know it's here. Because yeah. you're going to need to use it at some time. It is a pretty right. pretty sexy room, though. Yeah, yeah. The I'm fireplace? glad. I'm glad I remembered it. I'm glad I remembered it when you said we can we have the extravaganza. I'm like, yeah, we could do it at my place. Ooh, we could do it upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now this is our second our second year doing the holiday extravaganza. Uh, uh, la last year we were at uh, Raul's in Soho. Are you familiar with? It? You're a food guy from New York. Do you, do you know uh, Raul's? I know of Raul's. I've never been though. Oh, you have to go. Yeah, that's really? Good stuff. I'm telling you, man. What's the uh, menu item of choice at Raul's? Uh, well, if you can get it's a it's French yeah, cuisine. It's, it's up. It's upper. It's upper scale, right? Yeah. But the menu has a secret. It's it's not on the menu, but it's the burger. The burger. And they only make 10, and you can only get it if you sit at the bar and ask for it. See, that's awesome. That, that, uh, the show that I had just recently taped for travel is called Man, they titled it Man Finds Food, but it's about that secret off the menu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff. The best Those stuff. are always the best. Gramercy Tavern does uh, an off the menu burger as well. I say, I love that stuff. Five napkin burger, if you bring in a banana, and you say you want the special sushi, and you put the banana down. This banana is one of the ingredients in the sushi, but you have to bring your own banana, and like that's the end. Ah, yeah. you're in the end. Yeah. That's cool. nice. It's it's crazy. There actually, it's funny. It's like 55 American restaurants, and it's airing in Australia now, <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> and, uh, but I love that stuff. I'll go to Raul's. What, what's the uh, what's the craziest thing that you've found like off the menu? Oh man, it's you know it was either if the restaurant was hidden or the 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 menu was. So I would say in terms of hidden restaurants. There's this spot in Austin, Texas. So I love Austin, like yeah. major, you know, ma major love affair with that city. So Sixth Street is, you know, the, they call it Dirty Six. Yep. It's like every right. bar, every yeah. every drunk UT student. It's insane the amount of drunks in that per, per capita. Bananas. <laughs> yeah. Bananas. Yeah. I was there like on a Halloween when they turned the clocks back, oh. and it was just like I, I wrote about it actually. <laughs> like I saw like Sasquatch making out with Princess Leia, <laughs> like, like like funky, dirty, like just. <laughs> Just fluid transfer kind of make out. And I was like, oh. Chewbacca's going to be pissed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so anyway, off of six, there's a place. It's um, uh, the oldest firehouse in Austin. It's been converted to a youth hostel. But if you walk into the main room, you know, there's like always in every youth hostel that one uh, bookcase that's got like Connect Four and like those faded books. Mm -hmm. If you push the whole bookcase to the right, come on, there's like a passageway. It's some like and clue you go shit. Down that passageway, and it's this unbelievable bar. Great cocktails, beautiful bar, and they make again off the menu sandwiches. There's one called the Lieutenant and one called the Captain. So they have charcuterie, but if you order it off the menu, they have certain sandwiches. The Lieutenant is Sick. It's like boucheron cheese, uh, soppressat, cap of coal, sun dried tomato, oven dried tomatoes that they make there in house. And they do it in a toaster oven right behind the bar. Oh, that's uh, awesome. With like balsamic. It's, it's the sickest. So that, that's pretty awesome. 
And then um, did they did they make that place because all the kids in the youth hostel were hungry and wanted to get drunk and they used to go behind the games? Like how <laughs> no. that's an odd entryway. Honestly, it's more like for like the locals in the know. When we were doing location scouting, Brian Cranston and Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad were there, and it's because it is you know uh, until I just came and fucked it up. For them. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, but it's it's actually a really lovely spot in uh, in Austin where. It's the state capital, it's a live music capital, and there's so many things that's so saturated that to find places that people don't know about, little dishes that people don't know about, mm-hmm. is the coolest stuff in the world. So I would say that's pretty awesome in terms of hidden restaurant. In terms of a hidden dish, um, I, I, this place, it's called uh, Doug's Last Stand in, uh, uh, Phil's Last Stand in Chicago, in Ukrainian Village, right? <laughs> so it's a hot dog stand in Ukrainian Village in Chicago, Illinois, but there's a shrimp po' boy it's off the menu there. And they put like a cheese sauce, like that local, like yeah. Chicago fucking cheese sauce <laughs> there. You know yeah, 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 yeah. With fried, like great fried shrimp, amazing local bakery bread, and it's completely off the menu. And it's not like any shrimp po' boy. It's like their interpretation of it. So good. And so it just ended up being kind of cool because you're 100%. Like you got to be in the know. There's a place in Nashville. You have to follow the chef on Twitter. He gives you a password for each dish, and you have to whisper it like, oh. real close in your server's <laughs> ear. And, and it's, you feel like really jacked up. You're like, there's some HR stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, like, yeah. They have an off the menu pimento cheeseburger called the Maverick Burger. So, like, for TV, they had me go, you know, take my breath away. Uh, <laughs> oh, but that's then so bad. they make a liquid nitrogen, um, a liquid nitrogen ice cream soda. That's off the menu, and if you want to order it, you have to whisper some other on God. I, I love uh, any liquid poured with nitrogen. It's crazy. It's, it's awesome. so sick, and they do it table side. And those Goo Goo clusters with the the peanuts and the, it's like a natural candy. It's like peanuts and chocolate yeah. and a little bit yeah. of caramel. They break it up, and he makes like bourbon vanilla ice cream. He makes it from scratch in the kitchen, in the bowl in a bowl. It's crazy with cream with the starter. And liquid nitrogen to freeze it, and just constantly whips it, so it's like a custard, like oh, a, yeah, yeah, like right. those old school Mr. Softy trucks. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's killer. And so, like the custards uh, things on, in uh, Seaside. Oh, oh uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about this. I didn't realize that you guys were down Monmouth Way, and I I, yeah. I worked at Shadow Lawn Stage on the Monmouth campus. So yeah, oh, I know no, that. Did you really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I lived in West Long Branch. Oh. And did uh, <laughs> I did three plays out there? I lived right, I mean, like a mile from the beach. Yes. That's my stomping ground, man. That's my. That's, that's where I grew up. Yeah. I was, we were laughing about it while you guys were taping the other show, how, so I'm, uh, I practiced the Jew craft, and uh, <laughs> I went to Yeshiva here in Brooklyn, and all the hot Syrian Jewish girls always used to talk about going down to Deal. Deal, that's r- right, right Deal behind Beach. my house. Yeah. Yeah. And I never knew Deal, like, Deal, like, yeah, Deal, New Jersey, and yeah. I never saw pictures of Deal. I it's never, like two blocks. Mm. And I never knew what it was, but I just knew that all the girls named, like, Nadine, and <laughs> Pamela, and Shiri, they all... We went to deal. And yeah. so when I got to West Long Branch and like someone from Monmouth was like, you know, and there's Daddy Warbuck's house. I mean, it's Woodrow Wilson's summer white house. Yeah. And so, of course, I try to do the Albert Finney tap dance, <laughs> fall <laughs> on my ass and like bounce on my spine all the way to the bottom. Like, ta-da. You know? <laughs> and they go, yeah, da 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 You should hang out and deal is, is right there. And I was like, yeah. what? Like a block away? It's the next town over, man. Yeah, yeah. Right? So before we get too much into it, we got We got to get to uh, our a staple here. Hell yeah! On pizza, right? Pizza, pizza and beer gets you in the room, but it's really all about the revolution of our guest, right? Joey so, Gatto helped get me in the room. I, I have a love affair with uh, <laughs> this man and his oh, colleagues, and uh, I, I have a lot of respect. Like literally, I met um, I met Sal and uh, Q uh, walking on the street, taking my laundry back when they were going <laughs> to see the Stones. And I stopped Sal, and I went, hey, you guys are really terrific. I really love your show. And Sal kind of gives me, like, sort of like the, hey, thanks, man. Let me get, let me get the fuck out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to talk to you very much. Like, not impolite, but just like, yeah, okay. And I was like, uh, I'm on uh, Man vs. Who's like, I thought I read you. <laughs> yeah. And we had a great conversation. Q's really into soccer as well. And uh, so, yeah, Any, anything for this guy. Yeah, nice, thanks, man. I'm glad you came, man. Of course. So man. let's let's talk, let's kind of digress for a second and talk about how it, how it all started. Yeah, yeah. Um, where, where, like, how did you fall into, I, I, I called it food entertainment, really, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. But, but I guess you were also, you were acting in college as well, so it wasn't about the food first, or it was about the acting first? You know what, like, I'm sure you, we all grew up in the city, you know, regardless of borough, and, you know, especially, like, you know, I'm, I'm 40 years old, so, 
the notion of like Brooklyn being a place with like, as I, I say this while I'm fucking wearing a cardigan, but, <laughs> you know, of like the cardigan wearing hipster, you know, I always say it's like the girlfriend named Chloe in a terry cloth dress and horn rim glasses who works for a graphic design firm making nonprofit glasses, right. every pair of glasses, mm -hmm. two kids get pairs of glasses. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. But you know, that, that Brooklyn, you know, it's like you grow up kind of colorblind and so you eat with your Italian friends and you eat with your Chinese friends and you eat with your German friends or your Syrian friends or whatever. and you, you, you like fall in love with food. Growing up in Brooklyn, I just, I did. Um, so yeah, I did TV when I was like nine. I did a TV show called Child's Play on CBS. You can see it on YouTube. And you'll see a little little chubby lisping at <laughs> Richmond. <laughs> and so I did this show and I got into acting a little bit and did it, but I was always into food and worked in the industry in some capacity since I was about 12 or 13 years old. And then, uh, yeah, um, Went away to college. I went to uh, Emory in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, uh, this girl broke my heart. And I bought one of those uh, Moleskine blank notebooks. Oh yeah. And um, <clears throat> I went to go write like kind of douchey college breakup poetry. And I used to just go on drives, just because I love getting lost in Atlanta and finding new shit. And so I started writing this um, food journal. It was actually like, a, like almost like a diary entry, but it became about the food. And, it was a much bigger thing, and I realized that food didn't just have to be like stuff on the menu or two pinches of salt and a cup of flour. Like, it could be a story, it could be an adventure, it could be, you know what I mean? Like, I walked in here and like, you were like, no one ate the penny. Like, you know what I mean? We, we all have like, w there's a reaction we all have to food, and it could be, a, it can be something passionate and beautiful. So, um, I started acting uh, out of college, and I uh, uh, supported myself in the food industry and learned as much as I could. And then went away to grad school in 2000, um, and I went to Yale for my master's in acting, but again, I kept doing the food thing on the side um, and signed with agents. And so when I was doing regional theater, you know, you're making moderate income at best and trying to pocket whatever the hell you can if, if you can sublet back in New York. And I just would go to all these restaurants and keep augmenting this food journal. And I'm not gonna, lie to you. I mean, I, the journal started in college, and then I just kept it as this, like, database of where to take girls on dates. Of course, yeah. All the other dirty white baseball cap-wearing <laughs> frat boys weren't taking their, like, yeah. come on, I'll take you to Ruth's Chris and throw a steak down your mouth. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm finding these beautiful, like, Vietnamese places in Chambly on Buford Highway, and these unbelievable, like, Latin places, like, of, of like, Venezuelan and, and El Salvadorian uh, descent in Atlanta that people never knew existed. Right. Then it was, like, people like, hey, my folks are coming into town. Can you recommend something? I'm like, there's something in this. And so I just augment and take a menu and staple it in. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I, I, I uh, signed with agents coming out of grad school. And my commercial agents in 2008 uh, sent out, they would send out these major breakdowns. Like, you know, I don't know, uh, Animal Planet looking for blonde, bilingual, Spanish-speaking scuba diver. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get that part. <laughs> only I, nail. Seriously, no, if only I were blonde. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, and, and so they, they put this thing out there, and um, my stepmom had given me a book. I'm not lying about this at all, and I'm not plugging it or nothing, but it, it, it helped me, called uh, The Renaissance Soul, Life Designed for People with Too Many Passions to Pick Just One. And I knew I had this food thing, I knew I had this entertainment thing, and I never, I never saw a way to marry them. And there's an exercise in the book about a reverse flow chart. And so do you do it, and you kind of arrive at what you could or should be doing. And it was having a food TV show. So I just launched myself at every opportunity I could mm -hmm. with that as my pinpoint focus. And sure enough, a breakdown came through. Uh, Travel China looking for someone who knows regional food, likes to eat, um, you know, doesn't mind like, eating a lot on camera, um, has on-camera comportment. And at that point, this is a God's honest truth. So I came out of Yale in May of 03. And my family was like, yeah, Yale degree, shit, it's in drama, god <laughs> yeah. damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mom got yeah. the sticker for her right. windshield and yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a very expensive education. It's not like you're going to Yale Law where you know your first year out of school, you pay back all your loans and you're done. Like, I've got friends that are still getting crushed by the Sally Mae. Yeah. I ain't saying she a mm -hmm. gold digger, but... Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, man, it was, it was uh, May of 03, and I bought a loose leaf binder. And I made a five-year plan like Stalin. And I put like a divider <laughs> for each year. And I was like, I'm going to book a national commercial. I want to work at a Lord A regional theater. I want my SAG card by this year. You I did like the secret, man. That's like the yeah. secret. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that, I, I started like basically, like you, the put power it out, of you put it out in the universe and you'll, the law of attraction. Dream yeah. boards. 
Yeah, dream boards. Well, that's, you know? I mean, and I, if, I, you, if you go back and look at that notebook right now, did you, you've accomplished all of those things, right? It's crazy. For five, almost five years to the day, Man vs. Food got picked up as a series. I swear to wow. God, I was working at Madison Square Garden TV. I had been a, a logger, like for $7 a shift. So a shift, yeah. so you understand, could be 10 hours. Or it could be four hours. You could be covering a Liberty game, you know, yeah. the, the WNBA game, or you could be covering the Westminster Dog Show. Mm -hmm. um, and then became an AP and, and, and worked my way up there. And I auditioned for Man vs. Food. And people were like, so did they just put like a bunch of food in a wheelbarrow? And they were yeah. like, here you go, fatty. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Eat away. Uh, and you know, there was, uh, it was uh, a woman named Barbara Barner was a casting director. And you had to bring in food and describe it. And so I brought this burrito from uh, Rachel's La Taqueria on uh, uh, 7th Avenue in Brooklyn that did mole. And I knew, like, oh, I could, I could. Jabber about mole. <laughs> yeah. Jabber and talk a bunch of crap about mole. I mean, mole. you can't. <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't get me started on mole, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm, like, the most boring part of the fucking podcast at this point. But anyway, so I did this, and uh, I came in, and then she literally said to me, she goes, oh, what do you like eating around the country? She's like, let's hear some recommendations. Oh, that's a soft So I got a little yeah. bit, yeah. like, I got a little bit cocky, yeah. and I was like, pick a region. Nah, she goes, yeah. all right, you're a kid from Brooklyn. Tell me about the Midwest. I'm like the Inn on Coventry for lemon ricotta pancakes and Cleveland <laughs> Isles buns in St. Paul. Yeah. The Juicy Lucy at Matt's Bar. And, like, I just went on and on and on and on and on. She said, whoa, whoa. So then I ate and did the thing. Had to do some, like, cue card reading, whatever. It was like a six or seven round process, and the final screen tests were at Katz's Deli. You're talking about a softball. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I did a ridiculous amount of research. My dad, may rest in peace, was an attorney, and he was like always about knowledge is power. So I got there the day before. I'm so freaking broke, dude. No way I could afford a sandwich. I go through, I interview everybody, um, and I uh, bought a t-shirt with what little money, <laughs> I never forget this, and I went, took it home, I cut the neck out of it, and then I spent five bucks laundering it at this little laundromat on Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn, not too far from where I live. So I came into the audition, and I had a, a black hoodie on, and I had this Katz's Deli t-shirt that looked, looked now old, really right? old yeah. as shit. Yeah. I had, they said they were going to have us do an intro read, which is essentially what I did for Man vs. Food at every single restaurant. So I rehearsed. They said you could just improv it, and I was like, I'm sure I could, but I won't, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. I just drilled that thing. So I came in there, and I knew facts that they didn't know. I'm like, so actually, Katz's Deli used to be across the street, but when yeah. the new subway line came, the city subsidized it. Now, if you look at the neon sign over <laughs> my shoulder, you'll notice that it says Katz's That's All. Well, that's actually not their motto. Leon Katz was speaking to the neon dealer. When he said, what do you want the sign to read? He said, Katz's, Katz's That's, that's all. all. And so on oh. and so forth, talked about Tom yeah. Lehrer lyrics. That's great. So they were like, this. So it was, I'll never, it was Valentine's Day. And I said, this is the, you know, I said, and they wanted to call the show Pig Out. And Man Vs. Food was like literally about the fourth or fifth potential title. And it was the one I latched on to. So I said, today I'm going to attempt a double Reuben challenge. Reuben weighs da 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 da. If I can eat it in a half hour, da 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 da. I get a picture and a t-shirt and this, that, and the other. And I was just like, and I went right into the camera and I was like, it's Valentine's Day in the Lower East Side. It's a new Valentine's Day massacre. Pff, this is Man Vs. Food. And I went, I went, oh, and if you think I'm reading this off a cue card, or if I'm just a fan of Katz's and I unzip my shirt and I went, <laughs> big fan. Flash forward to the final episode of season one. Now, we had been bought for 10. Um, they renewed for eight. And then by 13, they were like, let's just keep doing this shit. Yeah. Um, by the end, two of the executives came and they were telling me, they're like, we never told you about the, our casting process. So they said, Man vs. Who was actually developed for a, a, a different host, a, a guy who had done another show. And you kind of came out of the clear blue, whatever else. And they go, but man, that moment in your audition when you <laughs> unzipped your hoodie and you showed the T-shirt, we're like, that's our guy. Yeah. And it's just about like that manifest destiny. Someone told me like luck is preparation meeting opportunity. Oh, that's so yeah, true. I like that. It's so funny. After you know, Jake was just on here and he was funny. I feel like the most boring. I feel like you're nah, talking to Elwood no, Hubbard or something no. like this. But no it was uh, this. <laughs> no, this, we, we love you, L. L. <laughs> you're doing you're doing great. No, but this is uh, no offense to any Scientologists maybe listening. I just feel I'm, very I'm actually uh, I'm actually a Scientologist. Really? Yeah. Tell tell yeah. me. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. I mean, I believe that this is a this is like a uh, what I like to call the alien ant farm. Uh huh. You know what I mean? I believe Adam. that. Wow. <laughs> Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? 
<laughs> reeled me in, yeah, yeah, got it, and yeah, I yeah. saw the little wiggler. <laughs> yeah, and I, oh, he jumped right in. Tom, got right Tom off Cruise and, and I are tight. Yeah. Yeah, but I, 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 I will say that there's been like little like funny, uh, uh, bizarre moments that have like happened. Just and I'll tell you this: they told me they pitched it to uh, Travel Channel on May 1st of 2008, and I didn't know how the process went. Like they're like, "Yeah, you got it," and I was like, "Sweet," and they're like, "Well." You got it provided there's a job to have. Right, you got the right, pot. Right, like, yeah. So we got yeah. the teaser trailer. So whatever, we do this thing. And uh, Matt Sharp, who is a dear friend, my uh, now co-executive producer, and Dan Adler, they're like, yeah, we're going to D.C. May 1st to pitch at the Travel Channel. Listen, brother, if it doesn't work out with this, you've really blown us away. We want to do stuff with you if this doesn't happen. Right, right. Yeah. I said, when will we know? He said, we'll probably know something by the end of the day. So I was understudying at this time i was understudying all the male roles at a show at ellis island called <laughs> taking a chance on america the bella lugosi ellis island story uh, we should have round tabled that to yeah. guess on that yeah. <laughs> oh it's amazing i was size doubling for uh jimmy kimmel and seth rogan for all their conde nast shoots so i would go and like wear clothes i could never possibly afford because i was sort of like a gent of size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah, I would yeah. do this, yeah. occasionally temping and waiting and cooking and this, that, and the other. So May 1st comes, I'm like waiting, and I, oh my, my God damn, I'm gonna be a success. And everyone at Yale who didn't believe in me and everyone this, I'm gonna <laughs> do this shit. And May 1st comes and goes, and I hear nothing. And so I go to the bar across the street from my house and I get legless drunk, like just drown <laughs> my sorrows. May 2nd, I wake up in my little basement apartment. I have my little flip phone, and I see the little message light blinking, and I, I, I listen to the message, and it's Matt Sharp going, Hey, bro, it's Matt. I, um, I had your cell phone number wrong by two digits. Give me a call. So and he's calling so the wrong person. <laughs> you're, you're getting drunk in the basement, pit, like def defeated because defeated. of a wrong number. Because of, of two digits. Done, done. And so then I call back, and I guess he had caller ID. So I call back, and it was his direct line, which he had never given me before. And he literally goes, you ready to be a star, dude? And I go, what are you talking about? He said, we went in, we talked, showed the thing, and then the lights came up. He said, this is obviously a show. We'll take 10 episodes. Wow, and I sure. screamed, yeah. and then all of a sudden, the hangover hit me, and oh, the walls just <laughs> <laughs> dropped yeah. to my knees. That's great. That's amazing. Yeah. That's li life-changing. That moment. Well, not only, not only, I mean, that was a big turn in the industry, like all that, you know, that whole, that year or those years coming up, the whole food thing, food entertainment was born. I was right? very lucky. I that caught, was just all the whole wave, right? I caught the wave. You're 100% right. And I'm not. Well, you know, some could say you surfed the wave, you made the wave happen. I mean, yeah. you're, you're a big part. You're very successful in the food entertainment. It means, it, it means a lot. I'm not going to lie. I got um, illegal cable when I lived in that basement and I had <laughs> two channels in addition to... Court TV, yeah, and Food Network, which is yeah. True TV, by the way. Court TV yeah, yeah. became True TV. <laughs> Court TV is True TV, home of impractical jokes. Yeah, that's you right. don't know it. We also were Katz's Deli. <laughs> that's right. I know, and you also did the Carnegie Deli one, which I was supposed to to do. I yes. remember Joey Fatone. Joey Fatone showed up. Had done it, and I remember Sal was like, "I'm so sorry, we don't have wardrobe. Can you wear you know black pants and a white shirt?" And I remember something happened. I couldn't do it that day. I'm so bummed because yeah. I, I do mean it. I love I love that show so much. I think it's. We'll get so, you. We'll get you, buddy. It's so funny because I'll periodically like go to situations in my mind, like, what would I do? I forget where I was just the other day, and I was thinking, oh my God, what if I had to take food off of people's plates? Yeah. And like, <laughs> I can't imagine. Like, That's what? funny because you're, like, you're yeah. like, I can't wait to do that show. Yet you saw what Joey Fatone had to go through. Yeah. And you're like, I can't wait to do it. Then you get there, you're like, God damn it, I have to do that? What the hell am I yeah. doing it, right? But you know what I think is that's the, the appeal. It's like, you know, obviously, you know, they're all like Murr and Sal. Like they're all such funny guys. You know, Q and Joey are so great. And like, obviously they like each other. Obviously they relate. But it's 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 uh, the patter is so real that you know that the moment when it drops, the moment when I so I I was at an event last night across from the Algonquin Hotel, and I remember one of your supermarket bits. The Algonquin you Round, the Algonquin round, table. round yeah. table. Yeah. And Mur <laughs> Murr had given you that as a suggestion, and you were on some other shit. And I remember he was like. Algonquin round table? Can we, can we get back to that one? <laughs> and you're like, you know what? Just take it. Just take it. You Just can have it. it. You can have it. So, I mean, I guess I like that. I like the, the fact that there's the gauntlet because there's, there's not a lot of real moments on TV anymore, you know? 
Is that, do any of you feel bad for the guy who got the calls that he should have got? <laughs> um, you know, this is Jake Van Wagner. Yeah. Uh, I, got, I got picked up on this show. And <laughs> Call me back. You're going to be a star. I'm sorry. I thought the wrong number. The, sad, the sad thing is, like, Jake really got the job, but the guy had the last name spelled <laughs> incorrectly. He was trying to catch him His on His email was at Jake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He put it, two G's in it's, it. It's just so, so sad, right? Yeah. It, it just G's. almost happened. <laughs> um, all right, so like with every guest, I like to play the sexy yeah. music and really look into their eyes and get a little sexy. Be careful. Yeah. Be, be careful. Be, like, Richmond's will, a sexy son of a bitch. You know what? But I, I made Jake Van, Van Wagner pregnant. <laughs> I'm just holding his hand. I have that power. Anyway, this is a game we like to play. It's called Top or Bottom. I'm going to give you two terms. It's a this or that, a yin or yang, or black or white. If those two things were in a relationship, which one will be on the top? Which one will be on the bottom? It's totally subjective. Built around you, and we're going to round table it starting with you. You okay. ready to play? Ready to play. All right, top or bottom, number one, smell or taste? Smell. Smell on top. Oh, yeah. What, why smell? Uh, smell is the most evocative memory-wise, and it's the one that lingers the longest. Ah, Oh, okay. And if, if that's why you always remember who fought it. <laughs> <laughs> I, and it's really bad when you can taste it. <laughs> that's called a dublet. <laughs> no, but that. also, you know, the thing is, like, no matter how delicious certain dishes are, if they smell bad, you know, when you bring them to your mouth, like, it, you, you can't do it. Like durian fruit, for example. Durian fruit? Yeah, D-U-R-I-A-N. In fact, in oh. Singapore, you could actually get charged a $1,000 fine for even bringing one onto mass transit. Oh, wow. And the actual fruit is delicious. Yeah, uh, I, I go taste. I go taste. There's nothing like taking a, that first bite of that something and just arf, loving it. I love taste. John Fay? Definitely smell. I yeah. mean... Women's hair, things that you smell in life can bring back memories. Yeah. All kinds of insightful things. I mean, taste. I can't even get to taste without going through smell. Yeah, you, you have me sold, Mafia. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I was on the fence with, with what you guys were saying, but I think the, the fact that you could smell something and have a memory and an actual reaction to that, I don't really remember that with taste. Like, I don't taste something and go, oh, that reminds me of when I was a kid. It's the smell, right? I, I'm, I'm also like a big smell, a big cologne guy, yeah. big, big into the health and beauty to the degree that you're like, Really, Adam? Like, yeah, like I'm into that stuff. There was a cologne that was made, I believe it was made by like Adidas called Rookie. And it came like in a ball. Or else. It was like the era of the Reggie bar. You what does Rookie yeah, smell right. like? Yeah, it you know? smells like inexperience and hope, <laughs> yeah. soon to be dashed by guys wearing brute and royal coat. Oh, <laughs> it smells like tightly closed ass. <laughs> right. so, uh, well, speaking of sports, number two, top or bottom, the New York Rangers or the Impractical Jokers? I, I hit you right in the mouth. I'm gonna say one, right? I'm gonna say not just because he's here. I'm gonna say impractical okay. jokers because though I love, uh, I, I I I love all the Ranger games I've gone to and I worked at the Garden and stuff. I'm obvious. I'm hockey is not my number one sport yeah. by any stretch, and I do really love comedy and I'm a big TV watcher and TV guy. So um, I'm gonna say impractical. If ever the choice is watch an episode of Impractical Jokers, or watch a Ranger game. I'm always gonna watch these. Nice. Guys. Right on. Truth. Truth. Nice. Gatt Joe Gatto. Practical Jokers wins that face right? off you every have to day. Even ask? Every day, man. You know what? The Rangers, they can't make you laugh like we can. Well, no, that's they can. true. That's they can true. make you cry, though. They can make you cry. <laughs> they made you cry many a times, I'm my sure friend. They have, they have right? <laughs> Joe Mafe. It's definitely in Practical Jokers. And as you know here, there are cameras on all of us, and each camera has a name. Mike, what is the name of my camera? It's called Joe Cam. No, it's not. It's not? It actually it's called Joe Cam. That's his label, but on the internet, when oh, you look at it, yeah. it's called Hockey Sock. Hockey Sock. Uh, <laughs> is it? All That's right. just because he's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, I, didn't, I, I wrote this, and I didn't uh, realize. This what is the a, toughest what, for you. I didn't realize what a predicament I was putting myself into. I was, like, thinking about you guys, you know? What is it? Well, for me. Well, first of all, you're employed by both. <laughs> I, I am. I'm employed by both. I love both. Um, so it's very difficult, but I, I, I think I'm going to shock the world here, and I'm going to say that uh, uh, Impractical Jokers is on top. Really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I love you, bro, right? It's like, yeah, blood is thicker than water. That's right, man. Uh, top or bottom, American the Edible or Man vs. Food Nation? Oh, America the Edible. Yeah, definitely, for sure. I mean, um, you know, Man vs. Food Nation, I mean, I, I think it was a blast to do. And it was awesome watching people become like heroes in their hometown. That was the dopest thing for me in terms of like watching kids see their dads looked at as heroes by a bunch of strangers for doing mm -hmm. nothing other than just like eating a spicy pizza, or whatever. And just meeting really great people doing that. 
but I think it just sort of, um, it, it ultimately paled in comparison to Man Versus Food. But America the Edible was my first book. It's my story. Um, and I'm going to be a little bit maudlin, but I, I visited a kid um, who had brain cancer or whatever else, and he loved my book, and his mom would read it to him in chemo. And like just that alone, to know that it could reach people. And my, my mom was a teacher. My dad was a lawyer. Like To have written a book that's in the Library of Congress, I'm gonna, that's huge for me. So America the Edible all day, every day. America the Edible just because it's in the Library of Congress. How do you right? pick anything else? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like it, it probably beats the Constitution for me at this point. <laughs> See, I almost want to go with that now after hearing that bad story. <laughs> I know, right? I was going to go, I gonna go with Man vs. Food because, honestly, I remember watching the first episode ever. Of Wait, Man he, said, food. he said Man vs. Food Nation. Yeah, oh, he didn't I say did. Man vs. Food. Pay oh, attention. You have written Nation is where the locals were doing the challenges, not oh, me. Oh, because, yeah, I remember you in that first one in Portland, and that just sold me oh, on so that the whole chain. So definitely America the Edible. I love Portland. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. For <laughs> it's got to be. If it were Man vs. Food in America, the Edible, yeah. I'd obviously say Man vs. Food because that was a game changer. It gave me, you know. There would have been no. Uh, America the edible. edible without man versus without food. question without question I agree right what came first the chicken of the America the that's edible. right <laughs> I gotta go the with the book chicken I ate man yeah. versus food <laughs> that's right <laughs> there you go uh, let's go to the next top or bottom number four Austin or Nashville Austin yeah Austin wow it's like that even blank. the first sentence I wrote of my book of America the Edible, yeah. available on Rodell Books. Thank you very much. Makes, a, makes a great gift. I also, or nothing else, it makes a great coaster for two jumbo <laughs> beverages. I actually recorded the audio book for that, which was a That's freaking funny. blast. Um, Austin, I wrote it in my book. I wrote, before you read further, dear reader, you need to know this about me. I love Austin, Texas. It's just, it is the best of Texas, in my opinion. It is the best of what the state can be. I, I love Austin so very much. And I love Nashville. I truly do, but... Austin is a type of place I've actually like looked into living more than once. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't been to either, man. Now, I, I need I've been to both. Get, you have? Uh, Nashville. Well, we filmed a, an episode in Austin. We filmed a, we filmed in Austin, which was which was fun. But Nashville has got a place in my heart because we performed at the uh, Wild West Comedy Festival. Right. Uh, we're actually going back there uh, in April of this year. Tickets on sale now. That's Vince Vaughn. Uh, Vince Vaughn's yeah, festival, that's right? Vince Vaughn's yeah. festival, and it's the first time I met Vince Vaughn, who is a hero of mine. Sure. You know this, yeah. Uh, growing up, so uh, I have a pretty decent Vince Vaughn impression. I discovered randomly. You do? Yeah. I have to, if I do the laugh, I can like. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, team player. Um, <laughs> the Vin. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, uh, go take you uh, out and uh, gotta get the uh, that's working out phenomenal just phenomenal for me <laughs> <laughs> the laugh, the laugh phenomenal <laughs> oh good <laughs> I don't know I haven't done it in a while I uh, yeah so I, I'm gonna have to go to Nashville for uh, for the experience but I did enjoy Austin a lot I have relatives who live in Austin <laughs> I've been to South by Southwest multiple times I mean music just comes up from the cracks yeah, in the sidewalk yeah. Austin is the place it's magnificent uh, I, I guess I'll just say Nashville for the music you know? Yeah. And Nashville's actually a really, really fun town. Like, I spent a little more time there recently, and now they have, you know, I explore, like, other neighborhoods, like the Gulch, and it's, it's really an amazing place. There's a cat named Max Goldberg who I met out there um, who has a bunch of um, different types of restaurants, and there's a restaurant called City House in Nashville, mm -hmm. which is just, it's literally a house. We actually filmed an episode of Man Finds Food there, like some great hidden food finds there. There's a place called Pepper Fire. There's a style of chicken there called hot chicken. Prince's is like the main spot. Now Nashville's Nashville's amazing. That's a that's a difficult one, but um, I never thought about living in Nashville right. the same way I thought about living, living in Austin. Austin. I also made Sal Volcano laugh, one of the hardest he ever did in his life in Nashville. He fell Not down. Around, he fall did down? fall down a real. <laughs> it was a real life fall down. There was a kid playing. You know how they play on the streets for money, whatever. And I was this kid. He had to be like 12 years old, and his father was like behind him as he just played or whatever. And he had the case open in front of him, and we just started walking. And I decided I just started to walk really funny and regally, and I locked eyes with him as he was singing. And I stood in front of him and I peeled a twenty dollar bill out and I put it in his pocket. And I went shh, and I walked away. From him. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, "You're fucking nuts!" And he's like, "You changed that kid's life forever." He's like, I can make $20 just playing on the corner. <laughs> can you just put it to bed for, for the world right now that when he when you make him laugh and he falls down, that shit's real? That's 100 Can real. you just lay People it to bed? People know that. I know, man. But we got a documentary coming up, and it's 
in the documentary, just he falls down multiple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He falls. He's a fall. Does he go like he goes completely flat? Yeah, and I got. I've honest. also made him throw up twice in his life from laughing, just laughing. He it's, loses control. It's one of the, from my perspective, it's one of the hardest things to film. Yes, you know what I mean? Because we're he drops we're out of frame. Yeah. He, not only that, but we're locked into these monopods with these big cameras, and we're kind of on those behind the scenes shots. And there's a table with a television and wires everywhere, lights. So when he falls, man, not only dropping out of frame, you gotta you gotta move around everything, you and you're over. knocking shit over. There's two. It's very difficult. I remember the first time he fell on camera. Uh, he fell, and the cameraman behind us just was like, like he froze. He yeah. didn't know what to do. We're like, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> yeah. He hits the shit. He's not in good shape. <laughs> you see, oh. I also like the small things you do. I remember one time, uh, Murr was, you were asking if he was book smart or street smart, and you're walking along, and you were like, hey, wait, give me your wallet. Yeah, you're book, you're book smart. <laughs> yeah, you're smart. That's right. <laughs> like, Don't. sometimes oh. I think with a lot of comedy out there, I mean, look, I, my jokes are so freaking cheesy. I heard that that was a college drinking game. That like you have to drink every time like I made a corny joke. I'm like you'd be wasted by the time the credits. Were <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. Anytime I sweat, I'm like, okay, yeah. is it a Wednesday? You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. But I love like it's just the small little bits. Was it you who was saying that Sal like gets major ethnic like around like a pretty girl? Oh yeah, he throws on his Latino love. He becomes he's he's Cuban, right? Yeah, he's Cuban. And then he but he like he and Puerto Rican, yeah. He brings that out a little. Oh, bit. he does. He's like, oh, come on. You know? When he sees so, <laughs> stop being so crazy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop throwing around bonitas. It's funny. Oh, really? Mm. Ah, Linda. He, he, we, we have this long-running joke that he always just has to mention it somehow. It is always forced that he's Latino. Oh, in front really? of a girl's pretty, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's like Desi Arnaz. Yes. <laughs> right? That's like, <laughs> Los I'm at home. home. <laughs> right? What is that? Yeah. That's what he does? He's, yeah, he is. <laughs> it's his thing. My, my last one that I kind of skipped, but I do want to talk to you about it. Uh, yeah. You have to pick. You have to pick Brooklyn or Manhattan. Brooklyn. Oh yeah, root to the fruit. That's my. That's that's who and what I am. That's what I'm about. My production company is called County of Kings. I mean, um, it just it made me who and what I am. I got mugged here. I got you know. I I, I got my all my firsts. You know. I mean, first kiss was at summer camp. I <laughs> grant you. Um, but uh, you know everything. First car I drove, lost my virginity. First, I mean, I got my my big break here. I uh, all this all the same week. It was a really big. <laughs> it week. was great. really. <laughs> oh, my bar mitzvah was a major. Too much I for just, a day. Yeah, yeah, man versus food was just in development for like a good twenty seven years. Like guys, come on already. But no, uh, yeah, I mean just Brooklyn. It's uh, you know close to a quarter of the U S. can trace. That used to be a third. I think it's about a quarter of the U S. could trace their roots back to Brooklyn. Um, Same. So I, I, I love it. And there are parts that are just unchanged. And that's what I think is so amazing. You go to Gravesend. You go down to parts of Borough Park. You go to, um, you know, Mill Basin. You go to Bergen Beach and, and Canarsie, where I used to live for quite a long time. I used to live in Starrett City. Like, there are places that are just pure Brooklyn. Like, if you go down Bedford Avenue or whatever else, you're down by Madison High School. Quentin Road is Quentin Road is Quentin Road. Like, Knapp Street is yeah. Knapp Street is Knapp Street. Like, I love the fact that now I say to someone in Los Angeles, I'm from Brooklyn, that's also from there, and they're like, all right, Brennan and Carr or Rolling Roaster. Wow, I yeah. can't believe you, I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. Brennan and Carr. Yeah, um, you know, my, my grandfather was an original bartender at Lundy's. Get out of here. Yeah. Holy cow, really? Yeah. Lundy's on Emmons Avenue. I remember going there with my family. Like, for the, the shore dinner was their big thing. And, yeah. I, uh, and now it's like a mini mall almost. Yeah, it's, it it's is. It's really depressing. With the Kenny Rogers Roasters, right? Right down the block. And I got tattooed. Now, that's <laughs> to, now talk <laughs> about delicious, guys. Make sure. I don't know if you've had. The Caesar wrap. You should really need that Caesar wrap, <laughs> the, the Caesar number one. Go for the combo because it really makes it economical. <laughs> but you know what's upsetting? Right down the street from Lundy's, they're closing the El Greco Diner. Yeah. They used to call it, you know, very. Uh, that's another thing I love about being, you know, a New Yorker is that you grow up, you know a little bit of Italian, you know a little bit of Yiddish, you know a little yep. bit of Spanish. So when my friend's grandma would call me a Testa Dominque or an Azupep, I'm like, I knew it wasn't a good thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but then you hear schmuck and putts and this and that, inflection. whatever. Inflection. It's all inflection. And right? Drek is like garbage. Some of our friends used to call the El Greco the El Dreck. But it was so good. Late night food, toasted ravioli, which I'll never. Everybody's got a late night diner, right? I mean, oh, that. what was that? What was that shithole we used to go to eat by you? The windmill? Oh, <laughs> what do, you, do you know about the windmill? You lived. You lived right there. Of course, I know the, the windmill. windmill. I used to drive long, these. From a I'd have to drive a car full of drunks. Speaking of which, two were here. He's yeah. over yeah. there. Rob. He's over, <laughs> there's this one. These guys. We used to go out, and you know, I don't drink, so I was a designated driver. And it'd always be like they'd be. At uh, trade winds, right? And yeah. you're like, it's windmill! Yeah, like, and I'd have to drag him out 
of the windmill. windmill was and then there's always, man. Isn't it so funny though when you're the DD or like you know you're not drinking for whatever reason? And they usually if you're the DD, which is so funny because your friends are like. You know, it's like it's Caligula in three quarters of the car, and then you're like sitting there, yeah, and just like, yeah, it's funny, it's great, so yeah. great, and like they're like like hysterical, <laughs> and, ah. and then there's like this sort of tacit, sort of implicit apology you make to the waiter with your eyes when your friends of are course. ordering. Of course, oh yeah. For like, I want, I want a tuna, I want two tuna melt, I want you put a tuna melt inside a tuna melt. <laughs> Doesn't he look? Doesn't he look like C-3PO? He totally. <laughs> he does. Say, Dude, say, do it. Say, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. I swear oh to God. Oh my God! Look at our waiter. You're like the old guy from the Great Adventure yeah. commercial. <laughs> 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 Come on, get on the bus. Let's <laughs> finger bus it. Like this, like, oh my God! That was your, that was your jam. jam. And then yeah. there's that one. Then there's that one sober friend that's just like, I'm sorry. Them. Yeah. I'll just yeah. have his, like, now we'll, here's we'll the problem though. You're remembering who our sober friend was. <laughs> it, he was worse than any of the drunks. Are you True kidding point. me? He would he tongue down 90 year old women. True I mean, story. come on, yeah. man. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, my grandmother told me she still can't find her salamander. Yeah. Oh, oh, well played. Well hey, you I know, love it. Connect the dots. True love. When you, you find it, you yeah, hold on, you boys. You know what's going to be funny though? You're going to be filming somewhere like in Mobile, Alabama or something like that. Walk past the pawn shop and there's going to be this old dookie rope with a. A salamander on it. You pick it up. It smells like Paco Rabanne. You'll know it's you. You're like, yes, I did yes, it. it's mine. Oh. But yes, Brooklyn for me. I beg your pardon. There you go. No, great. that's great, man. Good like, man. we're Joey, we're essentially from Brooklyn. You know? Avenue T. Avenue T. I don't T know. T and what? Still well. Still well. Really? Avenue, Avenue T. Our grandparents. Our, 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 our mothers. mothers. Our brothers. And they <laughs> lived there. So I grew up between Avenue T and Avenue U on a road called Homecrest. So which is the equivalent of 12th and a half. Same so. area? So that's where the area now is called Homecrest or Gravesend. So the closest major intersection would be Avenue U and Coney Island Avenue. Yeah. Prince of Pizza, Lester's Clothing, City of Bargains, where I got all my G.I. Joe figures. And you've never lived till you've heard like an old Jewish guy complaining, like talking about the G.I. Joe figures by name. No, we haven't got a snake eye. We've got <laughs> two storm shadows. We've got a gung ho. We've got a Flint, a Lady J, and a Baroness. Who, who knew that uh, that you were such a, a I was a connoisseur. huge GI Joe. Oh, All right, let me I'm ask you this. Let me ask now. you this. Cop, uh, top or bottom? Storm Shadow or Snake Eyes? Uh. As an action <laughs> figure, as a character. As a character. Snake Eyes. Of course. Snake Eyes. Of Snake course. Eyes is both Special Forces and Ninja. And the reissue character, yeah, it's okay. I didn't date a lot in high school. <laughs> so you were in that basement but, apartment. Is that what I know, right? no, no, no. This point was <laughs> two digits. But he, two had digits. The, he had the sword that went into his back. He had a wolf. <laughs> Two-digit Richmond. He did have a wolf, dude. <laughs> he did have two a wolf. Two-digit Richmond. That's what I was going to him. <laughs> two digits. You're only off by right, two digits. Was off by two digits. <laughs> 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 oh, I thought I'd know where they were going, like, Two fingers. No, 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 no. I was like, the call. We are going back to the call. I was like, thank God, Jesus. Last time I heard two digits. <laughs> two digits. I was auditioning for Man vs. Food. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last part of the test. <laughs> they were like, oh, it's you. You're in. It's you. Test it's in like the Excalibur. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. I love your knowledge of G.I. Joe, man. I, I had every single one of those. I was so, so into it. My friend Andrew Geller, his, his dad was a little more well off. He worked for. Um, I'm sure we all have had them. Like, if you ever go to an event and bought a t shirt, Anvil was the, the brand yeah, name. Yeah. That his dad was uh, one of the mucky mucks at Anvil, and he got the the flag, the USS flag, oh, the aircraft carrier. So great, yeah, huge. And they had a house in the Midwood area, so he had the attic, and it was his GI Joe thing. And he and his dad had even built a wrestling ring, with like ropes and turnbuckles and, <laughs> and felt and stuff. And it was, I mean, literally, it was like I would come over with my dragonfly helicopter. Mm, I had my Blackbird. Yeah. I thought it was cool. And then Andrew was like. Oh my God! I got the ones that yeah. actually, you know, some yeah. blood when you shoot them with imaginary. Blood. <laughs> I was like, I have the ones that change color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn out the lights. He, he goes in the dark. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> Andrew's like, yeah. Did I mention my entire aircraft carrier? Oh. Nice helicopter. You could land it that, on my aircraft carrier. Yeah. Yeah, I had a friend who had that man. It took up the entire basement. Yep. yep. It, like this table clearly would take up the table. Absolutely. It was about the amazing, length of this table. Amazing, amazing toy. But, we know, had the uh, we had the attic on Harbor Road when we were growing up, and my sisters and I shared a play room uh -huh. and it, one half of it was like he-man and yeah. the other half was like the whole barbie thing but my sisters were older than me and picked uh -huh. on me a lot and they lost their ken so they 
to took my He-Man <laughs> and made him yeah. Ken. They turned him back into Prince Adam. <laughs> so he yeah. Adam. Which is so yeah. messed up that of all names, when he was sort of the namby-pamby wearing purple with yeah. like a little scared cat, his name was Adam. Adam. There yeah. you go, yep. He's Prince Adam, Adam. and then he held aloft the sword in the whole jammy, but I was like, it's, fu <laughs> it's funny. So my mom is still friends with her college roommate, and um, her college roommate married her college sweetheart, so that husband and wife have always been in our life, and I call them Aunt Linda and Uncle Bob, and they're Irish Catholic, but they're still my aunt and uncle. Mm -hmm. They have two children, an older son, a younger daughter, and the son and I were obviously much closer, and they had a shared playroom. She had Barbie everything. Right. She had the dream yeah. house and the pool house. The pink house Corvette. And yeah. the condo and the whole thing, yeah. We had each gotten these Jeeps for Hanumas, you know, whatever, these like, <laughs> crazy <laughs> Firefox, <laughs> and they were big, and they had like some power behind them. So, you know, he would tease his sister. So I was like, oh, that's what, that's what you do when you have a sister? Okay, I'll do that too. <laughs> and we started this all-out assault on the dream house. Uh. And Ken was coming down in that little white elevator. <laughs> and Robbie goes, get up! And these two jeeps just triangulated on Ken. And we just blasted him and the elevator shut off. Nice. And, like, it was this. I had, didn't have a sister, so I was unaccustomed to the delayed cry. Yeah. Oh. The sort of. Oh. The whimper. The whimper, yeah. 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 The whimper the break. <laughs> And yeah. it gets so loud so fast. And then you get frozen. You don't know what the hell to do. And then the word that yeah. chills your bones, Mom! Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, you're dead. Like, oh, shit. It's it. Done. I was like, why? What do you think that Ken was thinking? <laughs> He's like, I got a hot day tonight. Oh, shoot. What the fuck are these Jeeps? <laughs> 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 I well, bought, and I song. remember, like, feeling bad. And then my mom's like, you have to go out and buy her a Ken. And, uh, and I went and I got her. And I wish I didn't have any brain cells dedicated to this knowledge. But I got her a <laughs> quick shave Ken. <laughs> Quick shave, Ken. Break that Which down. I want to know what that is. I know. Yeah, it's like the Tom of Finland, Ken. But he came with basically a brown magic marker and a little razor that was essentially like a, a sponge. squeegee yeah. or a sponge. Yeah. A dry erase. And like, you could oh, draw, oh, and you would right, draw right, on right. a mustache, a beard. So naturally, we're like kids with like, there's no internet access, but yeah. we're curious. So we were shaving all parts of Ken. You know, we were quick pubes, Ken. Ken. Quick pubes, Ken. <laughs> Ken. Brazilian Ken. <laughs> but it was just like all pube because there's no there's no uh, yeah, there's pagoda. So you're uh, sitting there just laying in the thatch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love how the conversation just clearly went to Barbie. Like, uh, it, you know, hey, you know, sometimes you four just guys get that. beer just happens. Uh, four dudes happens. talking about Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> so like you do. So when you when you came in first. Uh, our producer sat you down. Yep. Oh we like boy. to do a, a th with theatrical people, and we figured you were a little bit theatrical. We like to do a game called uh, PBR Theater. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Some people you might know it a little bit like magic, you're an actor, right? Yeah, you know. You I am. So she asked you a couple questions. We took a scene that we Joey and I talked about this. We yep. all kind of congregated about it, and we thought you know food, uh, New York, funny, and and the the scene that came up, Gata, was the Goodfellas kitchen scene. Do you remember the scene? scene? Wait, wait, the scene, when which the, one where he's at the, end. at the end? At the end. Where he's like, I got some cutlets, and they're just perfect to fry up, and make sure you stir in the sauce. That no, one. No, 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 prison kitchen. Prison kitchen. Prison prison kitchen. kitchen. Oh. He slices it thin. Yeah. He used to smoke up the joint something fierce, and the hacks used to die. <laughs> yes. He made a yeah. great steak. Yes. Go. Right. Go. How many onions you put in the sauce? I didn't put too Don't many put onions. Don't put too many onions in the sauce. sauce. Okay. Huh? And you cut the garlic That's so it? thin so it hit the oil, it would just disintegrate. That's so exactly right. You got the red and the white. Let me see the red and the white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Lobster. So, so we're gonna we're gonna put you into that. You're gonna be Henry Hill. We're gonna play the. All I'm gonna play life. Paulie. Joey's gonna be uh, Vinny, and uh, Joe's another character. All but before we be a gangster. that's it here's your chance but before we do it let's just kind of go over this real quick a derogatory term towards uh towards women and you said chicken head i right. figured that was the safest that's one. that's a very safe <laughs> one we all appreciate it. that's what we call them. Chick chicken heads, right uh the second was a, a derogatory term towards men and you said a breeder mm -hmm. well i love that term yeah i uh, there were um uh, a couple of uh, really good friends of mine in grad school that were that were gay and they would laugh about just how sort of I mean, I'm unabashed about being like a straight guy. And there were like a lot of dudes. And I don't mean that in any kind of like oppressive or like uh, kind of like gross way. But like <laughs> there were a lot of dudes that would try to bro down with me and my friends. But then uh, occasionally there were like some hardcore like feminine activists in my class. And whenever they'd be around, if you ever said, wow, she's hot. They'd be like, dude, there are girls here, man. <laughs> like, you yeah. seriously? You were talking yeah. about so-and-so's ass a second ago. Mm -hmm. And so like I always felt that was a little fake. So I... The joke was because I guess being like sort of defiantly hetero was like, my, my friend Jacob Bloomer would go, "Oh, you're such a breeder." <laughs> <laughs> I love that term, man. Yep. Uh, the next one was we ask every single 
guests we've ever had a cured meat that plays this game, and you, I, I promise you, nobody's ever said the same cured meat. Do you be, can you believe that? I think that's kind of awesome. My mind reeled too. Like I was like, <laughs> I was gonna do you I say Iberico, like pepperoni, like pepperoni. But I don't think of that as a cured meat. You don't? I don't. Like I think about like slice. I th actually, the first thing I thought of was like Iberico, but then I was like, eh. Okay. And then <laughs> I mean that would have been amazing. Then, so then I was like this, and then it just uh, set me up, and so I came up with super sad, super, super sad. sad, of course. And I just again like also I came in, I saw we have the little lovely cheese board over here on the <laughs> dais, <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, super sad or capicola, something like this probably was gonna. It's not a party out. unless you got super sad. Yeah, <laughs> never is. What grandpa always said, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, Joe, it's not a party in Joe Maffei's house unless there's eggplant rollatini. It's not a party <laughs> here unless you get super sad. But that's another argument for another day. <laughs> Uh, the most it. disgusting thing that you can imagine and you said? Ugh. Mama June from Honey Boo Boo. Honey Boo Boo. That's up there. That is, man, right? I just, it's just got to be, it's just, it's got to be like a Guys, guys, it's not as bad as you think. It's not. <laughs> it's just She's got this lovely salamander necklace. <laughs> My friends laugh their asses off. Therapy is voice. tippy top. <laughs> this is a throwaway, uh, a podcast that spotlights the revolutions all around us. Pizza Beer Revolution. <laughs> A sharp object, you said? A pencil compass. A pencil compass. Oh, that's yeah. fu that's fu that it's really true. funny you said that because we ran through this a couple times and I chose pencil. And uh, they it was that needle. looked at me. Oh, the needle's scary. It yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah. Why would they ever give students in Brooklyn one of those? <laughs> so you can stab <laughs> your friends. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, yeah, seriously. It's like, I know you've got raging hormones and you're starting to fight. So now let's give you something that has a six inch hyper sharp nail. Oh, on. I also thought you meant because of the vandalism. Like you would carve any wood, oh, yeah. anything, yeah. anything too. You oh know what I mean? God, the totally. desk, everything. The last one we asked you was a cartoon character. And you said Bugs Bunny. It's gotta go, Bugs. You went Bugs Bunny. Yeah. I was a big fan of that Saturday morning. This is it. Tonight's, Tonight's the, the night. night. It's a hit. We'll hit, hit the, the heights. Up all down, the down, heights down. will hit. On with the show, this is it. Yeah. I loved that, and I loved. Uh, I will totally cop to loving Muppet Babies. Oh, yeah. Muppet, Muppet Babies. Oh, make yeah. your dreams come true. Yeah. Do -do yeah. yeah. See, I also do. I could do impressions of just about every Muppet, and they're better than my Vince Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> Why are there so many songs about rainbows? That's good. Hey! Oh, oh Kermit, been... my sweet. That's not bad. And then. Um, you got an animal? I love my dance. Good one. Waka, waka, waka. Mana, mana. And then um, I was also Manamana. I was also a really big fan of Gonzo. Oh, oh yeah. Camilla, oh, my beautiful chick. That's and no great. one does a Gonzo. No, Gonzo is Gonzo nowadays. He is Gonzo. Yes. Like Gonzo. I know. It's like it's tough out here for a weirdo. Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, so uh, gentlemen, take a look at your your scripts. Got it. So I'm Johnny Dio. Got it. All right. Uh, I don't I don't have I don't have my uh, one that I'm gonna need here to read my part. Did I give you three papers or two? That's okay, Paulie. I might have given Adam too many. Sorry. It should be two each. Yeah, so I only have one. So, so basically, if you take a look, uh, Gatto, re read uh, re who's playing who. Okay, I don't, so I don't have uh, Dinner in Prison, the Goodfellas scene. Henry Hill will be played by Adam Richman. Thank you very much. Vinny will be played by Joe Maffei. I, Joe Gatto, will play Johnny Dio, and Mike Polano will be playing Paul. In theory, Mike doesn't have a script in front of him, but we'll, we'll give it a nice. shot anyway. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Ready to do it. This yes. is uh, PBR Theater, starring Adam Richman as Henry Hill in The Sopranos. Nope. I'm sorry, in The Goodfellas. Goodfellas, <laughs> 60%, <laughs> I don't have it in front of me. In The Goodfellas <laughs> prison cooking scene. Wait for it. Wait for it. I'm waiting. Action. In prison, pizza beer revolution was always a big thing. We had a pasta course, and then we had a breeder, a fish. <laughs> Paul did the prep work. He was doing a year. I had this wonderful system for doing the garlic. He was the pencil compass, and he would slice it so thin that it would liquefy in the pan with just a little oil. It was a very good system. Vinny was in charge of the tomato sauce. Ah, uh, it's got that smell. I got three types of breeder in the sauce. Paulie, what'd you put in there? I got the veal, I got the beef. Ah, oh, good, you gotta have the blue vein flesh hammer. That's the flavor. I felt he used too many chicken heads, but it was still a very good sauce. Vinny, don't put too many chicken heads in the sauce. 
I didn't use too many chicken heads, Paulie. I put three small chicken heads. That's all I did. Three chicken heads? How many cans of tomatoes? Two cans. I put two big cans in there. Ah, uh, you don't need three chicken heads in there. <laughs> Johnny Dio did the breeder. We didn't have a broiler, so Johnny did everything in pans. He used to smell up the joint something awful, and the hacks used to die, but he still cooked up a great steak. Vinny, how do you like yours? Rare, medium rare. Medium rare. Mmm, an aristocrat. I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you think of prison, you get pictures in your mind of these old movies with rows and rows of guys behind bars. But it wasn't like that for wise guys. It really wasn't that bad. Except that I miss Bugs Bunny. He was doing his time in Atlanta. I mean, everyone else in the joint was doing real time all mixed together, living like Darth Vader, but we lived alone. I mean, we own the joint. Even the hacks we couldn't bribe would never rat on the guys that we did. Hey, sorry it took so long. That little skinny suprasada started to become a real pain in the ass. We're going to need to do something about that little bastard. Uh, that's okay. I took care of him. Okay, boys. Let's, let's eat. eat. Let's yeah. eat. Good there job. Go. That was good, right? You love that scene, I right? love it. <laughs> Let her do it, Henry. Let her do it. <laughs> Let her do it. Uh. Janice Rossi is a whore. <laughs> <laughs> you have a whore living in your building. There's a whore uh. in your building. It's so funny. If you grow up here, like, quoting, it's, so there's, like, a, a brand of, like, peanuts that you could buy, like, at bodegas. It's called Bazzini. I kid you not, my friend and I, in the same day, text each other videos going, it was Bazzini all along. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, when you know these movies, it's so funny. And especially if you grew up in Brooklyn, like, the place they burned down in the fuck you pay me scene, that's Caleros on Coney Island Avenue. My mom taught at PS209, which was across the street. And when I got my tonsils out, I went to the Carvel directly across the street from that Caleros. Mm -hmm. So you sit there, and there's these octagonal windows. And you're out there, and, like, you know, that's when... Joe Pesci's like asking to date this girl. She don't want to date Italians. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so you see that thing. Guys quote that movie like all the time. So it's so great. Yeah. Um, before before we get out of here, I you remember that sound? Yeah, totally. Dial up. Is that I what got, it means to you? I always ask people. I got mail. You got mail. We like to talk about the armchair futurist. The year's 2050, right? And the revolution is all revolving around you. Yeah. So the year's 2050. Like I'm the father of the revolution? You're, you're, you're the father of the food entertainment <laughs> revolution. Shit. What does it look like? You're sitting back in your lounge, your feet are up, you're looking at the food entertainment industry, the year's 2050, break it down. Well, things are looking rosy for the Adam Richmond Network. <laughs> um, Very good. You I like know, it. It's, um, it's, it's really interesting. Um, there's uh, just about no fine dining. There's one channel for fine dining. Um, some of it is just uh, slow-mo shots of barbecue being cooked with porn music. Some is porn with barbecue sounds <laughs> over it. Mm -hmm. Some are naked women making barbecue. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's um, the thing that I like about 2050 is that you don't actually have to go to these places anymore. It's like the Jetsons, so you can yeah. actually taste whatever you can try, mm -hmm. on, including the porn, um, which is why smell is so important. Of course. So you could just... <laughs> You could amp up the barbecue smell yeah. and turn down everything else, which I think is actually quite nice, regardless of what you're eating. What's the uh, what's the it food of 2050? Like now, it's like kale or a fucking Brussels sprout. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh man, 2050. It is so all about these protein blocks made from uh, the humans that we deem unnecessary. <laughs> but they are eat all the old people, right? It's just it, they have such flavor. People have been just so sedentary in the information age. They're so well marbled. So they'll be like, okay, this is a blogger. And like, you like, do like a braised blogger uh -huh. with like cream like a Kobe sauce. Beef. Oh. Exactly. You could even eat like Kobe beef is actually Kobe Bryant that's been aged right. since he died. Oh. And um, he's just, he's how do you like your How do you like your blogger? How do I like my blogger or my Kobe? Uh, uh, an aristocrat. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have my breeder. It's, 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 it's breeder blocks. That's what they call them. Oh, they call breeder blocks, basically. Uh, oh. I can't wait for that world. <laughs> awesome to have you, buddy. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Yeah, man. Thank you so much Thank for coming out. Uh, it's been a good of course, time. this has been a blast. Thank you. On Thanks. the way, is there uh, anything you want to plug? Your book, maybe? or Yeah, so I have a brand new cookbook. My first cookbook is coming out in May. It's called Straight Up Tasty, Meals, Memories, and Mouthfuls from My Travels. It comes out May 12th. You can order it now. And um, that's it. And I guess if you're in Australia, watch Man Finds Food. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on Twitter, at Adam Richmond, and uh, Instagram, too. All right. Joe Gatto. 
Uh, I want everybody to get out there and put a positive message on Twitter right now. Oh, I like that. Put a positive message on Twitter so those kids know that there's positivity in the world. Hashtag Good positivity. Idea. Hashtag positivity. Hashtag Joe said positivity. so. Joe said so. Hashtag positivity. Joe said so. Joe. Uh, I got nothing to plug, but I'm saying keep watching. We got one more episode of the Pizza Beer Revolution Extra- holiday extravaganza. Ganza. You can find us on the web at pizzabeerrevolution.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Give us some love, and we'll love you back. We'll see you on the ne- next episode. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Adam, Thank you, buddy. guys. Salud. Cheers, Cheers salud. Uh, icky bread in the glass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's great, buddy.